The days where flying cars were a distant dream are long gone. Today, companies worldwide are designing them. So when will we be ready for takeoff? Our topic today on Shift. Whether it's Airbus, Boeing, NASA or startups like Volocopter in Germany, developers across the globe want us to take off in electrically powered flying vehicles. Many cities are choked with traffic, but in the sky there's still plenty of room. And most of the prototypes are supposed to be less harmful to the environment. So when will flying cars claim the skies and will they really improve our lives? Here's what two experts have to say. It's hard to predict when flying cars will go mainstream or when we'll have the necessary infrastructure as well as a social acceptance. But I do believe that flying cars will eventually transform our lives. In cities like New York, Sao Paulo, Shanghai, Beijing and other places where space is scarce, the global elites, people with money, want to be able to move around quickly. That creates demand. This will probably just be a solution for the mobility problems of a very small percentage of society, a mobility elite. Fancy speedsters for the super rich. That's not what I had in mind. In Japan, they're not just planning for the rich. By 2023, Japanese megacities want to have commercial sky taxis. That's why the government's investing in businesses like SkyDrive. In August 2020, the startup announced its first manned test flight. My colleague Cassandra Bo got an exclusive glimpse of what happens inside the secret research center. This is it. Japan's first flying car. I definitely need to see this. And of course, fly in it too. When I think of flying cars, I think of Back to the Future, Disney's Meet the Robinsons, and my childhood cartoon, The Jetsons. Our sci-fi imagination is now becoming reality. My team and I began our journey to SkyDrive's research center from Tokyo. Before embarking on this trip, we had to sign confidentiality agreements. Why the secrecy and strictness? Because the technological details and the testing location are top secret. I'm allowed to say this much though. We're about 300 kilometers southwest of the capital, in the middle of the mountains. What a thrill. Right now, I'm standing in front of the R&D center of SkyDrive. And the location is top secret. Kind of makes me feel like I'm in a James Bond movie. Da -da. Down, da -da, down. I'm Bo Casbo. The air mobility startup was founded in 2012 and is backed up by Toyota. And behind these doors is where the magic happens. And here is where it's parked, SkyDrive's prototype with eight little rotors. To me, the place doesn't immediately scream high tech. Sadly, I'm not allowed to test it without a pilot's license. Well, at least I got to sit in it and it was Awesome. Just time traveled into the future. Well, not literally, but it kind of feels like it. Some experts say flying cars will reduce traffic jams in urban areas, lower pollution, and save travel time. SkyDrive is one of about 80 companies worldwide that are currently working on so-called EV tolls electric vertical takeoff and landing. These flying cars run on batteries and they can land and take off from the tiniest bases. Air travel already exists, but it's still very inconvenient. Our goal is to create a compact and quiet flying vehicle so that people can fly every day. Currently, the prototype's flight time is limited to three to five minutes. This is supposed to change soon though. The developers are hoping that in only two years' time, their flying cars will be used as air taxis, in tourism or for emergency medical services. But there are still a number of technical obstacles left to overcome. More motors will provide greater safety. But when you increase the number of motors, you have to build it bigger and heavier. So the goal is to figure out the right number of motors 
in order to ensure safety, but at the same time, keep the aircraft as compact as possible. It's a fine balance. Test pilot Toshio Ando tells me that for this year, the next milestone for the project is already in the works, launching a two-seater. To fly across Tokyo Bay in one of these? I can't even begin to imagine. Oh, this has been quite a journey. I learned a lot about flying cars and I even got to sit in one. But let's be clear, the ultimate goal for these vehicles is autonomous flying. And until that happens, there are a number of technical obstacles that we have to overcome. And even more importantly, these projects depend heavily on public acceptance. If you'd like to see what else Cassandra Bow has been up to, check out our YouTube channel. SkyDrive's model is made for air travel, but hybrids go a step further, traveling in the air and on roads. Sounds great, there's just one huge obstacle. For many of these ideas, you need a runway. The Dutch company PALV is coming close. Their vehicle has already been approved for road traffic. At a top speed of 160 km an hour, it could turn some heads. When its propellers are unfolded, the PAL-V turns into a gyrocopter. But along with a driver's license and pilot's license, you'll need 300,000 euros in the bank. Most flying car models aren't made for road traffic, but work like helicopters or drones. They're called eVTOLs. E stands for electric and VTOL means vertical takeoff and landing. And they're quite spectacular. Check this out. Is this the mobility of the future? These prototypes are electrically powered aircraft that can hover, take off, and land vertically. They're called multicopters or EV tolls. So, which company will bring the first model to market? Global players like Airbus and Boeing have already joined the race as have startups like Volocopter from Germany. The technology is really very simple, which allows you to build a vehicle that can fly, with much less effort than you need to build a helicopter. Other advantages are the fact that they're really quiet and emission-free. But so far, none of these sky taxis can fly longer than about 20 minutes. For safety reasons, though, they need to be able to remain airborne 30 minutes longer than their longest trip. Current battery technology just isn't up to that. Bad weather is another obstacle. EV tolls can't fly in strong wind or heavy rain. Still, their developers believe these flying vehicles will revolutionize mobility, and sooner than we might think. Governments will also have to give them the green light. Germany's transport ministry seems open to the idea. We're quite interested in seeing sky taxis become a reality here in Germany. In 2017, we passed new regulations governing the use of drones and unmanned aircraft. The next step would be to institute regulations specifically tailored to sky taxis. For the most part, this will happen on the European level. So how exactly will this work? Perhaps sky taxis will fly set routes and use clearly defined landing spots, on skyscrapers, for example. To handle both manned and unmanned aircraft, air traffic control systems will also need a revamp. So none of this will happen overnight. That still leaves a lot of open questions, like the short flight time of just 20 minutes. And even though sky taxis won't need paved roads, they will need the right infrastructure. So when exactly will flying vehicles take to the skies? Aerospace expert Stefan Lieverdag believes it will take at least 15 years. But who will be flying them, Herr Lieverdag? There will be professional pilots, very highly skilled and certified. They won't allow the passengers or people on the ground to be exposed to a higher risk than with an ordinary helicopter. What airspace infrastructure will we need? How exactly it's going to work is still up in the air. Things like whether we'll need an external agency that will set the flight routes, for example, or if that's something that companies could set more or less themselves. It's all dependent on factors like traffic density and the infrastructure and data connections available. 
How realistic is autonomous flying at this point in time? The regulations for transporting parcels are already quite rigorous. Depending on the size and weight of the unmanned aircraft, there will be a lot of rules. For instance, you'll need a flight termination system to ensure an aircraft with technical problems doesn't crash into residential areas. So we're still a long way off from having human passengers aboard. Most developers are aiming for autonomous sky taxis, even if there's still a long way to go. No pilot also saves money and space. At this year's CES, General Motors gave us a preview. This video by GM is still a simulation, but the US car maker hopes its Cadillac EV toll will soon become a reality. The electric and autonomous flying car is designed for short commutes in urban areas. This model has room for a single passenger, but General Motors is also developing a two-seater. For the first and last mile, passengers can switch to an autonomous road Cadillac. A year earlier at CES, South Korean car manufacturer Hyundai presented a similar vision of the future. A sky taxi that takes off and lands vertically. After a test phase with a pilot, this flying taxi with room for five passengers would eventually be autonomous. At hubs, passengers could switch to a car or transfer to another sky taxi. Flying taxis clouding the skies. Whether it's transport drones or sky taxis, it's clear that we need to think about what the future will bring. A recent survey in Germany found that just 18% of the population could imagine commuting with flying taxis. Just over 50% would be willing to use sky taxis in emergencies. For myself, I'd be keen to test a prototype. So what's your take? Could you imagine taking a sky taxi to work or do you think it's not safe? Let us know on YouTube, Facebook or DW.com. That's all for today. Take care and see you soon. Thank you.